What is the good life? In Concord, Massachusetts, a baby is born. His name is Henry David Thoreau. Thoreau was born the third child of John and Cynthia Thoreau. From an early age, he showed great signs of academic promise, impressing both his teachers and mentors. He entered Harvard in 1833 at the age of 16. In university, he was a good student, but would use the school library for his personal interests rather than his studies. He enjoyed reflecting upon the world and found great serenity in the outdoors. While at Harvard, Thoreau befriended Ralph Waldo Emerson, the father of the American transcendentalism movement. After discovering his essay on nature, transcendentalists at their core seek to transcend the material world around them, mainly through spiritual experience and self-reflection. This transcendence often happens within nature. Emerson wrote, at the gates of the forest is a sanctity which shames our religions. Transcendentalists generally believe that each individual is the key to understanding the universe. Emerson saw greatness within Thoreau, and while neither knew it then, Thoreau would become one of the most important contributors to transcendentalism and American literature at large. For numerous years after his graduation, Thoreau began his season of searching. In 1837, he took up a job as a teacher. However, after just two weeks of dissatisfactory work, in a dispute with a superintendent, he resigned. Soon he began work at his father's pencil factory and even started a school with his brother, John. However, after John fell ill, he would return back to working for his father. After years of quiet desperation working in commerce, Thoreau was invited to live in Emerson's household. He continued his simple and quiet living until the winter of 1842. As New Year rolled around, Thoreau's brother, John cut himself while shaving. But other than that, it's just another Saturday. A few days later, however, John figures out that his wound is infected with tetanus. Tetanus is an infection caused by bacteria entering your body through a skin wound. And for a person in the 1840s, it is lethal. John would die in Thoreau's arms on January 11th. Thoreau wrote, I feel like a feather floating in the atmosphere. However, the winter was not over yet. On that same fateful January, Emerson's son contracted scarlet fever and subsequently passed away. Devastated, Emerson wrote, I comprehend nothing of the fact but its bitterness. Explanation, I have none. These two intertwined tragedies brought Thoreau and Emerson closer. However, while Emerson kept writing, Thoreau dropped his pen for a time. Usually so perfectly attuned to sounds, especially natural or musical, Thoreau now feels untuned, even lost. Amongst other things, on Independence Day of 1845, Thoreau confined himself to a cabin in the woods on a plot of Emerson's land next to Walden Pond, partially to write a tribute to his brother. His intention was to have time to simplify and face the bare facts of life. Thoreau writes in one of his most famous passages, I went to the woods because I wished to live deliberately, and not, when I came to die, discover that I had not lived. Embodying transcendentalist values, Thoreau lived mostly independently, growing his own crops and taking unusual jobs to sustain himself. From this semi-isolated state, Thoreau produced his masterwork, Walden, in which he reflects on his quest for spiritual understanding away from the modern hustle of life. He wrote in a later essay, Let us consider the way in which we spend our lives. It is nothing but work, work, work. There is no more fatal blunderer than he who consumes the greater part of his life. Getting is living. Thoreau insists that life is glorious, and one must take their life seriously. It is for this reason Thoreau puts so much emphasis on the virtue of simplicity and the value of self-discovery. It is often overlooked, however, that while Thoreau did value the cultivation of the self, he also always reminded his readers to focus on friendship, sympathy, and interconnectedness. He wrote, I had three chairs in my house, one for solitude, two for friendship, and three for society. Consequently, a lot of the beauty in his writings lies in works mostly unknown to the general public. So, after staying at Walden for the better part of two years, Thoreau moved out. He wrote, I left the woods for as good a reason as I went there. Perhaps it seemed to me that I had several more lives to live, and I could not spare any more time for that one. Perhaps this is best reflected in a collection of essays published after his death, 
titled Faith in a Seed. In these essays, Thoreau bridges the gap between literature and science, even defending controversial ideas at the time. More importantly, however, Thoreau writes about the need to grow the next generation and the importance of interconnectedness. Through Emerson, who was like a father figure to him, through the lumberjack and the farmer whom he struck up conversations with, through the tools he used each day and the seeds he sowed in the spring, even at Walden, or in the solitude of the woods, Thoreau was still connected to everyone else. Before his death in 1862, Thoreau became a fervent abolitionist, vehemently fighting against the institution of slavery. After Thoreau's death, his friend, mentor, and fellow writer, Emerson, wrote, The country knows not yet, or in the least part, how great a son it has lost. His soul was made for the noblest society. He had, in a short life, exhausted the capabilities of this world. Wherever there is knowledge, wherever there is virtue, wherever there is beauty, he will find a home. In the wisdom of Ecclesiastes, it is written, To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck out what is planted. The good life is one where we are excited to live in, one that is built through relationships, but also an ability to cultivate oneself. It is one filled with happiness, and though there may be seasons of searching, seasons of sowing, long winters, dreadful summers, inauspicious falls, and even seasons of waiting and waiting. In the end, there is also a time of harvest. In the words of Henry David Thoreau, Though I do not believe that a plant will spring up where no seed has been, I have great faith in a seed. Convince me that you have a seed there, and I am prepared to expect wonders.